Calvary Temple is India's largest church with more than 300,000 members. Now it's on a mission to build 40 more mega churches in the next 10 years. Pastor Satish Kumar believes it's time to reach India's lost with the gospel. Take a look. Most roads in Hyderabad on Sundays lead to Calvary Temple. It's a little after four in the morning and side streets around the church are already jammed as church volunteers coordinate traffic, shuttle buses, auto rickshaws and motorcycles ferry thousands of people, all trying to get here some two hours ahead of Calvary's first of five services that begin at six. By sunrise, the faithful have taken their seats. The main sanctuary holds 18,000 people, supported by adjacent Bethlehem Hall with 15,000 and a third structure accommodating more than 3,000. Hundreds more watching on television screens scattered around the sprawling Calvary campus. Pastor Satish Kumar preaches all five services, with the last one ending at 8 p.m. I be given uh, grace to pastor this church, which practices the word of God, which is beyond my dream and imagination. Calvary Temple started in 2005 with about two dozen people. Well, today, it boasts more than 300,000 members, making it this nation's biggest church and one of the largest in the world. They have 11 satellite churches with plans of more nationwide expansion. God put a burden in my heart to establish 40 mega churches, just like what you see here, um, during the next 10 years. Pastor Kumar says the church adds some 3,000 new believers each month in a sign that the Lord is moving mightily across the country. God's hand is upon India. It's the time for India to reach the lost, not only within the country, across the globe. In addition, the church produces over 650 television programs each month in 17 of the country's major languages for broadcast on national television. Not only within the nation, even Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Gulf countries. Millions more follow on social media. The reason for the church's success? Preaching the pure word of God is what attracts people. And practicing the word of God, what keeps people within the church. That practical demonstration on full display here each Sunday. Narayana Podili works as a civil engineer during the week. On Sunday, he leads an army of 150 church volunteers who spend hours chopping, slicing, peeling and stirring, all to prepare free breakfast, lunch and dinner meals for 50,000 people. We are committed to come here every Sunday at 3.30, 4 a.m. in the morning and we keep working till evening. Nagaveli Mandim has served in the Calvary kitchen for seven years after making a promise to God that if he healed her cancerous tumor, she would serve the church in this capacity. Because I made that promise, God healed me completely without surgery. God cleared the tumor in my chest. As a thanksgiving to him, I serve here at the Lord's house. She and volunteers feed more than 200,000 people each month. In India, we say service to mankind is service to God. So that is what we try to practice. We try to show God's love in action in every possible way that we find. Calvary also has an on-campus hospital where members get free medical treatment on Sundays and medicines at reduced cost. The majority of people who come here are poor and cannot afford the treatment. Members also have access to church facilities to hold marriages. And when a church member passes away, Calvary handles all funeral, burial and meal arrangements. Again, all for free. And one of the things you do is when somebody's having a birthday, yes. you send them a cake. That's a lot of cakes. Yes. 350,000 people. Absolutely. In 2007, Calvary Temple created an access card system, the first of its kind, to follow up with members and their families. I've got thousands of people. How do I know that who hasn't showed up on Sunday? 
As I was praying, God put access card into my mind. Each member must swipe their card when attending any one of the five Sunday services. Without fail, if we don't show up to church, we get a call. They'll ask me why I didn't come to church, and after they find out, they will pray for me. I'm happy when I receive that call. The fact that they care for us is really special, and because of that, we will surely come to the next service. Pastor Kumar says prayer has always been an integral part of their success. The church has held 40 days of prayer and fasting since 2005, drawing tens of thousands of young participants to stadiums around the country. During this 40 days fasting prayer, prayers, I teach from Genesis to, to Revelation. Every book I try to explain, hundreds and thousands of young kids read Bible. Each month, the church, along with its satellite campuses, holds a night with God as members pray for revival. About 25,000 to 30,000 people join together. Uh, that has been the biggest, largest online prayers in our uh, nation. In recent years, however, India has witnessed an unprecedented uptick in violence against Christians. The more the persecution, the more the church growth. And that's what's happening in India. Most attacks carried out by Hindu extremist groups who accuse Christians of forcibly converting people to Christianity. Pastor Kumar, a Hindu convert to Christianity himself, says resistance produces power. It's my passion, my burden, that before I die, I want to see every Indian will hear the gospel and know the Savior. George, I had no idea. God yeah. is really visiting yeah, absolutely. India. Absolutely, yeah. And, you know, we do these reports of the persecution that they're facing. And Pastor Satish says that in the midst of persecution, the church is thriving. And it's one of the largest churches in the world. It's incredible. It's incredible. They feed 200,000 people each month, 50,000 people at a church service every Sunday. It's incredible. And everybody gets a cake. That's right. Yeah, for the birthday. I want to visit. All right. Well, thanks.